I can't tell you, this is sort of a bittersweet day for me. Uh, Justice Breyer and I go back a long way, all the way back to the mid-70s when he first came on the Judiciary Committee, but that's another story. I'm here today to express the nation's gratitude to Justice Stephen Breyer for his remarkable career of public service and his clear-eyed commitment to making our country's laws work for its people. And uh, our gratitude extends to Justice Breyer's family for being partners in his decades of public service. In particular, I want to thank his wife, jo Dr. Joanne Breyer, who is uh, here today and who has stood by him for nearly six decades uh, and with her fierce intellect, good humor, and enormous heart. I want to thank you. The country owes you as well. I was proud and grateful to be there at the start of this distinguished career in the Supreme Court. And I'm very proud to be here today on his announcement of his retirement. Today, Justice Breyer announces his intention to step down from active service after four decades, four decades on the federal bench and 28 years on the United States Supreme Court. His legacy includes his work as a leading scholar and jurist in administrative law, bringing his brilliance to bear to make government run more efficiently and effectively. It includes his stature as a beacon of wisdom on our Constitution and what it means. And through it all, Justice Breyer has worked tirelessly to give faith to the notion that the law exists to help the people. Everyone knows that Stephen Breyer has been an exemplary justice, fair to the parties before him, courteous to his colleagues, careful in his reasoning. He's written landmark opinions on topics ranging from reproductive rights to health care to voting rights to patent law the laws protecting our environment and the laws that protect our religious practices. His opinions are practical, sensible, and nuanced. It reflects his belief that a job of a judge is not to lay down a rule, but to get it right, to get it right. I think he's a model public servant in a time of great division in this country. Justice Breyer has been everything his country could have asked of him. And he's appeared before, when he appeared before the Judiciary Committee almost three decades ago, we all had high hopes for the mark he would leave on history, the law, and the Constitution. And he's exceeded those hopes in every possible way. Today is his day, our day to commend his, and his life of service and his life on the court. Choosing someone to sit in the Supreme Court, I believe, is one of the most serious constitutional responsibility a president has. Our process is going to be rigorous. I will select a nominee worthy of Justice Breyer's legacy of excellence and decency. While I've been studying candidates' backgrounds and writings, I've made no decision except one. The person I will nominate will be someone with extraordinary qualifications, character, experience, and integrity. And that person will be the first black woman ever nominated to the United States Supreme Court. It's long overdue in my view. I made that commitment during the campaign for president, and I will keep that commitment. Once I select a nominee, I will ask the Senate to move promptly on my choice. In the end, I will nominate a historic candidate, someone who is worthy of Justice Breyer's legacy, and someone who, like Justice Breyer, will provide incredible service on the United States Supreme Court.